Hello, and welcome to Escapees Virtual Campfire. We're glad to have you here on this Wednesday night. And tonight, we're going to be preparing for Thanksgiving with a few guests. Right now, I just want to hit a few items of club news so you guys know what's happening right now in the club. And we recently just started our winter home bases. They have started, and they're off to a wonderful um, another start, I hate to say that again, but everybody is having a good time and it it's, seems to be working out well so far. It's nice to be able to get together with friends during this time. Uh, we actually do have a few spots open in the Hangouts in Texas and um, in Arizona. If anyone is interested, you might want to go ahead and jump on that, look at the Hangouts coming up on the escapees.com page. And in case you missed it, Escapade, we're doing it. Escapade Take Two in Rock Springs, um, since we had to cancel this year. We're not going to have one in March, but we are planning for July and hoping that we can all make it to Wyoming in July. That will be July 18th through 23rd, so we can see you there. And finally, just to let you know, if you were in any of our Escapees RV parks. Uh, the, the facilities have changed their open schedule. So you can check that out at escapeeasyrvparks.com forward slash COVID. So without further ado, let's get to what we are talking about tonight. And that would be Thanksgiving in your RV. And I have a few guests in here. Me show bring on let's see bring on everyone here we have Amanda Watson and we have Steve who's stepping in for Kirk and I at the moment well Kirk is here too can't see me. I can't see him right now <laughs> so we're gonna be talking about Thanksgiving in your RV we know that Especially for somebody who hasn't done it or you're used to cooking in your own house, the kitchen and everything, that it can be a little daunting to think about this, what we can, Americans consider a big holiday with big food in such a small space. But we've all done it. So we're here to tell you it is possible. And we're going to have a little fun tonight talking about it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. We can see them and we'll address them as we go. So welcome, guys. It's good to see you. I hope you guys are doing well. Yeah, this is the, this is the, first, the first night of the uh, Kirk and Steven show. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a new comedy duo, but we're just going to... Well, we'll wait to the end before we put in the proper comedy, but we want to talk about Thanksgiving. Okay. And we That's apologize great. for the technical uh, problem. Anya's computer kind of dumped right at the last second. So sorry oh, about that. Oh, no. Well, I'm going to ask a, a quick question for you guys. Stephen, you are a V, aren't you? Or are you PH? With a V, yes. Okay. That's what I thought. But I wanted to make sure. I don't spell your name. I'm also, wrong. I'm also the latest. I'm also the latest reincarnation of Sean Connery, <laughs> <laughs> with a S E A N. Yeah, yeah. And Sean Connery, listen to you, listen to your accent. Do you do you celebrate Thanksgiving with us Americans? I guess uh, I've been here for thirty years, and I love Thanksgiving. It's a wonderful, <laughs> it's a wonderful celebration you have of culling turkeys. We're here at the Rock. <laughs> well, great. All right. Well, guys, let's let's get started. Um, so, as I said, I know we have all done Thanksgiving in our RVs. Um, we've all been on the road for a while, um, and I I think it's actually kind of a fun, different experience. I I've done one out in the desert, with your friends. I think I believe a few of you have. Um, <laughs> What was one of your favorite experience or one of the favorite times you've had for Thanksgiving in your RV? Amanda, how about you? Um, well, one year we got a spot at Grayton Beach State Park, which is in Florida. And some of my family came down and they rented a cottage there. 
so we were able to do family in the RV, but we also had things, we also had family with us. So it was a really nice combination. Um, that was probably my favorite so far. I think that's a great idea, something that's a little different. And for people who, who think, you know, I, I can't celebrate Thanksgiving with my family in my RV, like I have to go to yeah. where they are. And a lot of times, I mean, personally, I know that my family is in the cold north and we do it but we like head yeah hightail it out as quickly yeah. as we can and sometimes you don't really want to be there yeah. at thanksgiving so that's a well, I, my family from awesome. the northeast so when i proposed going to florida for thanksgiving they were all over it <laughs> yeah so it gave them something different and it allowed us to spend thanksgiving with them without having to go where it was freezing cold yeah, that's not a hard sell, huh? No, like, it wasn't that hard, no. <laughs> no, and what a great way, because it, it also kind of it lets them experience a little bit of your lifestyle. Yeah, um, getting to funny enough, it was not long after that that my mom and stepdad ended up buying an RV, uh, which they spent a few years in. Huh. So I think maybe it did come oh, back. Wow. <laughs> Like, wait, this is this is pretty nice. I don't have to be in the cool northeast yeah, um, yeah. during the holiday. Okay, I think I can work with it. Yeah, totally understandable. That's great. And what about you guys, the Stephen and Kirk show down there? You want to speak? Uh, my favorite Thanksgiving was our first one on the year. Oh, no, actually, it was uh, two years ago. We got to spend Thanksgiving at our fellow escapers friends uh bill and porter we we spent it at porter's parents house in south carolina and i thought that was uh, pretty special that's pretty sweet that's RV nice friend. that you were yeah and bring in the family that you got to do right. that mm -hmm. yeah that's pretty nice how about you? well you know um we had an escapers uh small group that did a what they call a friends giving which was uh, for people who didn't have family here, and uh, it was at Joshua Tree, and it was it was uh, it was like Scottish weather. <laughs> that time it was so wet, but for some reason we all were able to pull together and get a lot of tents together. But I would uh, I would say that the, the the element that was important in terms of the fact that we were all in separate vehicles and we'd all travel differently and that we weren't sitting around a table because we didn't have a table to sit around it was the idea that we actually because we didn't have family to go to that we were able to get together and still enjoy a meal together um the key was there wasn't this big grand turkey that someone had cooked all day and pulled mm -hmm. out of the oven to much to most people's dismay that they'd spent all day doing it we, it was it was a form of potluck, but we organized the potluck so it wasn't just a mismatch. It was um, people had signed up for certain dishes, like we do at convergences, but it was done in a more organized fashion. But there wasn't the the big turkey thing that you have with your family, but everyone was around, and there was friends gathered around, even though it was raining. We had tents and we pulled it together. So that was the special part about it. It was a friends friends got together because they couldn't get their family, but we organized our food in a certain way that it worked perfectly. That's wonderful. I mean, and that truly, I think is more what it's about. I mean, you're giving thanks because you're around friends rather than the food's delicious. Don't get me wrong. I love Thanksgiving food, but <laughs> being able to be with friends or family at that time is really what makes Thanksgiving special. So it's wonderful that you were all able to get together and do that, celebrate it. Um, we one time uh, celebrated Thanksgiving with some friends. It was just a, a few other couples. And we were actually at a park visiting friends. And we knew some other couples that were out boondocking. And one of them did not have a tow car. And they had kids. So um, they, we went out to them. So everybody just did that kind of potluck thing. We knew somebody made a soup. And we made some sides. And a couple of them was their first first uh, Thanksgiving in the U.S. They were German, so they were here and they made a couple German dishes. Um, someone made actually didn't make a turkey in their RV oven. It was very you know not the huge bird, but the smaller one. 
and um, we we set up the clam tent that a lot of us have um, and set up the food in there. And then, yes, we didn't really have a big table to sit around. We all sat in our our chairs outside, but we were in, a, in the desert celebrating Thanksgiving with a few friends and that worked out well. I think that's something that can be accomplished this year too, if you're outside and you know still wanna spend time with people. It's easy. Yeah, to I mean, that. I totally agree with you. That was the whole, that was why it worked so well is because it was friends and you don't need to have the turkey. I mean, you can have a potluck, it's just, you just have to have cranberry jelly. <laughs> really, basically, as long as you've got the cranberries, the turkey can go away and fly and away. Pie. It doesn't it's not needed. And you have alcohol. To have pie too. Pie is critical. Oh, yes. pie! Oh, yeah. Pie. I didn't mention the dessert. Yeah. I thought we'd go into that later. <laughs> but yes, you've, you've got to have the dessert. You've got to have the pies. If you've got pies and you get some form of cranberry, you don't need anything else. In fact, you might not even need the friends. <laughs> it's a, a great thanksgiving right there i mean and you can combine it i i often will make like an apple cranberry pie and hey all in one dish there we go thanksgiving oh if you could put if you put the turkey in the pie as well you got everything covered <laughs> put some gravy turkey pie cranberry well sage sausage all in one pie and just give everyone a pie and let them go off and eat it on their own I think that totally makes sense. It's just a savory pie, and that would totally work. And that's like yeah, a one-pot meal. You know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Individual dishes. This is sounding like the perfect COVID, <laughs> really, like meal. Like, we can make individual dishes, a little pot pie with turkey and stuffing and cranberries. Mm -hmm. Bam. Done. You guys are all good. Okay. It's over. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all joking aside, um, something that I figured. Oh wait, Susan, are you a canned cranberry jelly kind of person or the fresh I stuff, Susan? <laughs> and yeah, Eric definitely it's doesn't. Getting dark fast here. Sorry. <laughs> yes, you guys are. Our, our lights, our lighting passing us. Yeah, that time change will really get you. That is one thing. Start your Thanksgiving early if you're going to yeah. be outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a very good point because you're outside. And this year we have to all be outside, exactly. outside of a rig. So you have to really be careful with lighting an outdoor <laughs> shelter that is not, that's COVID friendly. That's, I think that's something we talked about before. Mm -hmm. I think we really want to make sure that we're in, we're in, we're really including the people who are very concerned about COVID, and we don't want to have a big political discussion about it. So just set up your places so that it is open. Right. And there's lots of airflow. Right, and that I mean that's the good thing. If you are in a warmer area right now, sitting like you guys are sitting outside, and you're okay. Yeah. Um, I think and we have a fan all very too. close together, right? Now. But yeah, you're outside, and you can breathe and socially distance and eat your food and have a good time. Absolutely. It's and doable. It's an RV. So let's talk a little bit about prepping because, you know, sometimes when you're, you're prepping for Thanksgiving, people start this weeks in advance. Ooh, that was some light. <laughs> but you still have to think about it. It's, it's not like you have, well, most of us, don't have huge fridges. There are some nice big fridges and RVs, but not all of us have those. So um, what do you guys do to kind of prepare for this meal um, beforehand? Um, um, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, well, I'm a big prepare ahead of time kind of person. So like if I know I'm gonna make pie for Thanksgiving, I'll even, I'll make the crust ahead of time and put it in the freezer and then pull it out later. Um, I have a tiny fridge and a fairly small RV with lot, not much storage. So I can't really prep a lot of meals ahead of time, but I have found that like prepping individual ingredients and then putting it together the day of is a big help. And also trying to utilize um, maybe untraditional appliances like crock pots and instant pots. I saw somebody on the comments said that they made yeah. a turkey breast in their instant pot. And that sounds really interesting. Yeah, so. that can be done. I mean, you just have to have a grill to do the, the crisping, but most of the heating can be done in the instant pot. You're absolutely right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, one other thing I'd like to bring up when it comes to prepping. One year we did um, we did kind of a small potluck style with some other RVers, yeah. and nobody really wanted to do the turkey. So we actually got a roasted turkey from Whole Foods and picked it up the day of and like heated it up. And I think that's kind of a nice way to do a combo so you don't feel like you have to do everything is to maybe get a few, maybe get a turkey from somewhere else or maybe get some sides from somewhere else and not feel like you have to make everything yourself in the RV. Yeah, I would agree with that. You can farm out what you need to because it's, it, depending on how many people you have, you might be bringing a lot of dishes in if you're doing yeah. a potluck, but also if it's you making all the dishes for yourself or your family, it could be a lot. And and I've made, and I know, I know all of you have made many, many meals in your RV and it can be done, but it can be overwhelming. And there is a limited amount of space. So trying so to keep could, everything. Could maybe folded. talk about that outdoor cooking. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I know Kirk can talk about some outdoor cooking and talk a little bit about that bird and different ways to cook it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we live in a pretty small airstream, so I, I do, and I enjoy it. I do most of the cooking outside. Um, I have a camp stove. Uh, I just have a new Traeger uh, grill and a Weber Smoky Mountain, so I can cook a lot of food if I want to. Um, and also, if you don't have that available to you, your oven, you know, you, you can just get a smaller bird or get a big bird and cut it up into different pieces and just put it on a sheet pan in your oven if you want. Um, but yes, uh, having uh, grills and outside ovens is it's a nice thing to have. And it, it's fun to cook outside. And I think people enjoy uh smelling their food cooking yeah I think so. so this this is one of the pictures that you gave us and that looks like are the turkey legs yeah we call i call those from? turkey pops you uh you take off, wrap them in bacon? yeah you wrap them in bacon wow. you uh you make it look like a popsicle except it's a meat sickle <laughs> and they're they're very fun to do or, and uh, then this so one you I, did a, a rotisserie? Uh, no, I, I actually, uh, I just cooked those in the grill. I just roasted them. I could have done it on the rotisserie. Um, I've done, uh, last year I did the turkey on my rotisserie. And that's a, it comes out pretty, pretty good on a rotisserie. So yeah, that, that's a different way. I mean, you have a rotisserie and you can always do the turkeys on the grill. So like, as we mm -hmm. talked about, starting it in the Instant Pot, putting it or, on the uh, grill. Finish. Some, people do, or, some people do a Dutch oven, you know, that's fun too. Mm -hmm. If you're able to burn, you, you, can, you can cook outside in a Dutch oven and it makes fantastic food. So Bill did say, there they are, they were awesome. So he oh, okay. <laughs> did a pretty I good know. job there. <laughs> I'm glad he said that. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want him saying that they're not good right, right on the in front of everyone here. Yeah. Well, so Vicky has a question oh. about RV oven temps, if they're pretty consistent for like a long cook for the turkeys or whatever else we're doing. So has anyone found their ovens to work well for these types of dishes? Um, traditionally, the RV oven does not work like a commercial oven. It's uh, always too hot, too small. <laughs> um, not hot enough. Not hot enough. Um, Burns everything on the bottom. <laughs> and then, your, and then your, van, your RV gets all hot. Listen, I want to suggest something here. <laughs> it might be controversial. But the idea of the, when you close your eyes, you think of Thanksgiving in America and the and the turkey comes, the massive over beast, overfed beast comes out of the oven. <laughs> Everyone's sitting around the table with their delicious um, side portions. And the mother or the father comes out on the big tray. And there's a ceremony like a haggis was coming out. And there's, a, there's, a, <laughs> there's like a piper coming in. And the turkey's piped in. Change that myth. 
What I'm <laughs> suggesting is because we have a different lifestyle, we don't have houses that have these kind of things. So change your whole paradigm regarding about what a turkey looks like. And maybe think of turkey pieces or Cornish game hens that are smaller, that when you stuff them with stuffing, every bite is full of stuffing, not only grandma that gets the bite of the stuffing with the turkey. So I'm suggesting change your paradigm, and you can do Thanksgiving in a very traditional way, but without the big beast. And that way it becomes much more manageable for people to cook inside or outside of their rigs. Am I making sense? I uh, absolutely In other words, cook whatever you want. Exactly. Cook whatever you want. The idea of like the Cornish game hen or like a small chicken. You know, like you don't have to do a big turkey, but I would like to defend the R V oven. Um, because, um you work have, for Dometic. We have an older did we don't even have a Dometic oven. We have an older R V and it has the original propane oven in it. And I bake everything in it and the key is to put a pizza stone in the bottom so it doesn't burn and it distributes the heat evenly and get yourself a little dial thermometer so you know what the temperature is and i i don't think that you'd really be able to, i think cooking like a turkey for four or five hours might be a little too much but i think if you found something smaller that only needed an hour or two i've had great luck with my rv oven in that regard i love your idea with i love your idea with the pizza so this is like a, a round pizza stone i'm um, familiar with the pizza stone actually we have a square one the round one broke because it bounced around too much but i found a big square one that's pretty heavy and it's on the bottom underneath the rack right above the heating element and what it does is it distributes the heat so you don't just have that one hot spot in the bottom of your oven. Yes, because the RV ovens typically have too much heat in the bottom yeah. Yeah. and nothing comes from the top. So I love your idea with the pizza stone. I mean, does it make good pizza? Um, <laughs> it does, but pizza. we actually have a special pizza oven that we use outside. So I don't use it for yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, okay, but a, pizza or a, pizza, a square pizza stone to distribute the heat. That's a very good, but never mm -hmm. heard of such a thing. Thank you for offering yeah. that suggestion. That's awesome. I will second that. And I actually do have a round one. The square one would be better because it fits, but we found a round one at a garage sale that fit perfectly in there. Oh, so we went with it. And so far, it hasn't broken. Cross my fingers. Right. After you said that, Amanda, now I'm like, hmm, it's going to bounce around. We found uh, that round one for a couple of years and we tend to drive on some crazy roads, so I'm not surprised it broke, but. Yeah, but it does help. It does help very much. And I I can't see that I've cooked a bird in our oven, but I have cooked many things and baked bread. And I know Amanda bakes a lot of bread and muffins and different things, and it works pretty well. I And we also had somebody asking about convection oven, and uh, I had that in our last rig. And I've made um, bunt cakes and different things in there and um, casseroles and focaccia pizzas and stuff like that. And it works pretty well, too. I would wonder about it for hours, going for hours. The convection oven seems a little, I don't know, in the <laughs> RV. I would wonder about that. And you are limited to the size and space you have anyway. But I think it could handle like a smaller like Cornish game hen or a smaller turkey breast or something like that would be fine in there. Oh, too. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's not a bad oven. Like she said, with the pizza stone, we don't use it mainly because our rig is so small. It's part of our storage. <laughs> I have that too. Yeah. I just have to take everything out before I use the oven. <laughs> right. It, you guys it's kind of hard to put your cast size. iron pans on the bed, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, but then the grill, if you have a grill, it's another just a great way to bring that mm -hmm. heat outside and free up. It's a good time to buy a grill. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cook that bird outside. Put your stuffing and your pies inside. But of course, you can make yeah. those pies a day at the time, too. Mm -hmm. so. so, Kirk, have you made a turkey on a, like a Weber outdoor grill? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, all the time. Even when we got a house. <laughs> okay, so a turkey can be cooked. Oh. How'd you control the temperature? Um, you just, like if you have a gas grill, it has the temperature. Uh, I I mess around with the vents. To, you have to constantly mess around with the vents to, to maintain the temperature. So basically, do you have a temperature thermometer attached to the beast? 
And yeah, then you're monitoring yeah, I have that. a Bluetooth thermometer, so I can Bluetooth. check Bluetooth. The... There you go, everyone. Oh, yeah. Bluetooth is what you need. That way you don't have to open That way you don't have to open all the time. So get yourself a Bluetooth thermometer, stick it in the bird, and... And then you know when it's done and not overcooked or undercooked. Right. <laughs> and you're not having so you... to open the, the door and let out all the heat to check it all the time. Right. If you're looking, you ain't cooking, is what they say. <laughs> Ah, I haven't heard that one, but that's, that makes sense. <laughs> so Scott did say about removing backbone on turkey breast and turn off the round table work for him. And Michelle mentioned her kids love brown quail smothered in stuffing and baked in a Dutch oven, which well, sounds pretty perfect for Thanksgiving to me. Yeah, that sounds it, amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, just, just have the bird, but just have a smaller species. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and, it, and it does the same thing. The pilgrims are very happy with all that idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still get the stuffing and then baked in your Dutch oven. That Dutch oven could be on your stove. It could be in your oven. It could be on the grill. It could be over a yeah. campfire. Air <laughs> fry. The air yeah. fryers are very popular item right now yes. amongst the community. And they come in all different shapes and sizes. And apparently they fry stuff with just air. <laughs> it crisps it. <laughs> we they crisp it. They crisp it without any oil, without any oil. Like they don't have to anyway. And some come in very small quant sizes which lose which has low wattage. So um it's all the rage right now. Last right. year was the um the 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 mini waffle that made the keto um eggs. This year is the air fryer. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to get real crazy, get a sous vide circulator. What a sous vide that says, friend. Playing with that. So, a friend has yeah, that. We, uh, we have some friends staying with us that that we formed a little pod here, and they have a sous vide, and they've cooked a couple steaks that way. And yeah. and then just, it doesn't come out very pretty when you pull it out of the sous vide. So then they have. Yeah, you know, because it creates a, it's a it's kind of a vacuum cooking system. It's yeah. French for under... Uh, sous vide means under something or other. Underwater. Underwater. <laughs> under something. Under pressure. I don't know. But it's a great way of, it, of pulling, pulling in flavor into something, the sous vide style. Bill, look that up. Bill has to check out what sous vide means. And it probably would work for like smaller turkey breast or something like that. And then um, if you can crisp them up in the oven or on the grill or something like that. Or It'd work or have it. a propane blowtorch. That works good too. Yeah, that will work too. Hmm. Yeah, and sous vide makes very good stuff. It's you know if you want to nail it every time, do sous vide. But. but here's here's what I want to tell everyone: if you have the greatest turkey in the world by the Cordon Bleu chef, and the mashed potatoes are absolutely perfectly silken with uh, butter from from fresh cows in Normandy. And you've got cranberries that grow from a tree. Jesus, if you have cranberries that grow from a tree and you've put over from a bog and you've, uh, and you've got them fresh, but you don't have love around your table and you don't have friends, it doesn't matter what the food's like. That's right. That's right. And I'll if you bring up politics this year, God forbid, <laughs> it's going to ruin every meal that we make. <laughs> you bring up politics. You can talk religion all you want, but don't bring up politics this year. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Good advice. Yeah. The key to a happy Thanksgiving. Football. Yeah, yeah you Bond can talk bet. about football. Football's fine. What else is fine? <laughs> well, you just have to have a lot of background. Rounds out all the noise. Football. Yeah. <laughs> Soccer. But so let's talk oh, about soccer. sides. What do you guys? Pies. 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 And I know Amanda makes pies in her RV. So you said you usually do it. You make the dough ahead of time. Um, yeah. I like Either. to make the dough ahead of time. You can keep it in the fridge for like a week or you can throw it in the freezer. You just have to make sure you give it enough time to warm up. Um, like I said, I've had. So Amanda, mm -hmm. Amanda, what do you think about these uh, pre-frozen pie shells? Um. I think my grandmother would be very upset if she knew I was using one, but I think they're fine. 
Um, have I they mean, come? A, have they come a long way? Are they? I, are they I just do, still? I do think they've come a long way. Yeah, like the Pillsbury one. You can even get. I think you can get the pre-made that comes in like a roll, and you roll it out into your. You know, so I'm sure it's, they're fine. Um, it's just kind of a tradition in my family that you make your own pie crust. Um, the other thing I, I feel like you can pie filling ahead of time. Like um, if you're doing an apple or a pumpkin, you could make the filling ahead of time, store it in a container in the fridge and then put it all together the day of, so. Yeah. Absolutely, that'll save you time. And it does, it, it cuts down on the cooking time. If you're yeah. cooking it with the filling on the stove and then you have it and then you want to put it in the oven, your, your time reduces drastically yeah. and it comes out just as delicious. Yep. I will say with the, the I, I make my own pie crust most of the time too. Um, it's, it's another grandmother and mother thing, like I have to make it. But I have used the shortcut at times when I um, we're trying to do something. But I, I personally think the frozen pie crust is much better than the refrigerated pie crust because it doesn't have all the preservatives. That oh, the, oh that's, yeah, that makes sense. That's good. Yep. Yeah, I think the refrigerated, I can taste it. Most mm. of the time, I think there's something off, but the um, I've picked up a, some pie crust in the freezer and I look at the ingredients and there's nothing in there that I wouldn't use. Yeah. So it's a little okay, idea. Okay, that's a good thing to know because, yeah, usually when uh, things are uh, refrig frozen, you don't need the preservatives. So it's closer right. probably to your to your grandmother's style with very little, very little added ingredients. Exactly, exactly. So it, it makes it easy. Yeah. And then I needed to do, I was making a gluten-free mm -hmm. um, pie crust here for yeah. a, a friend. And I was like, I'm not even going to try yeah. making a gluten-free pie crust right now. So yeah. I just bought a frozen one and that worked out well. Yeah. I've done that too. I have somebody in my family who has celiac and it's, I think I got it at Whole Foods maybe. And it was fine. And you know, it was much easier than trying to recreate the gluten-free on my own. I also yeah. have to say yeah. about pies, though, even though I'm a proponent of homemade pies, I don't think that there's any shame oh. in buying pies for Thanksgiving. Um, right. I think especially now, like, you could probably find a local bakery who could sell you a pie, you know, support a small business or something. So, I, you know, I like making things myself, but I also don't think that buying it is bad either. Exactly. And Jeannie says she she uses the pre-made pie shells and she usually mm -hmm. makes the pies the night before. And Michelle has another good tip. She she's had good luck doing the smaller tarts with pie crust and filling. Oh, either yeah. for her in the mini I tin. Did that one year I did um, apple turnovers with pie crust and that mm -hmm. was kind of fun. And actually, that would be good this year. If you're with people and you're trying not to share as much food, that, you actually that's a great that's an absolute great point yeah. because we're talking about pre-COVID where the turkey shared and the cranberry sauce is shared mm -hmm. and the yeah. pies are shared. Maybe this is the year where you make small finger-sized foods mm -hmm. where people don't need to share. Yeah, exactly. I've been about that a lot. Yeah, how to make it? How to still get together with a small group of people? but make it safe for everybody. So. Yeah, so smaller pies, finger, f like as they do in, uh, in in Britain where they have small, at Christmas time we have these small mince pies, which mm -hmm. someone grabs one or two of them and they don't have to share it and they go to a corner of the room and eat it all by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the kind of concept here where you're getting finger-sized food. So yeah. we could incorporate that into Turkey as well. You could have a, yeah. A turnover or something. A turkey turnover. A turkey, a turkey well, samosa. If you do the little game birds, you can have your own. But I yeah, think that is your own bird. Yeah. <laughs> and we, ha I have like little mini pie shells. I have a few different things of that because I'm, I'm a pie person. So like, I have many little different ideas of pie. But you could also use muffin tins for that to make like Ooh. individual pies if you wanted to do that. And expand upon that into like the stuffing category. You can make stuffing muffins in that individual type thing too. So oh, that so it sounds like your pies are more important than the 
than the main course. Well, actually, <laughs> I, I, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't even eat the bird. So, like, it, yeah, to me, oh, good for yeah, you. Absolutely, I am all about the pie and the stuffing. Really <laughs> and the stuffing. I like the stuffing idea and the muffin tins. That's pretty clever. Yeah, it's um, yeah. something I've I've seen, but I'm seeing come up a lot more this year too. Yeah. Yeah, I think probably a lot of people are trying to think of different ways to do Thanksgiving this year. Well, again, think about think outside the box and think about how other cultures outside of traditional Thanksgiving yeah. in the U.S., how they safely provide small amounts of food. I mean, every culture has a pasty, a samosa, yeah. some kind of pie. There are, there are single ha tamale. I mean, we have so many different cultural, maybe this is the year to have a multicultural um, type of Thanksgiving where you're actually you t thinking outside the box and thinking, how can we make smaller hand-sized portions of food, whether it's the main course or the pie, that you can have individualized, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's what you wanted to do, I personally, it sounds like a lot of work to me. But, uh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like so you're trying to throw a whole big bird in, yeah. the, in the thing. Yeah. Who you were having Thanksgiving with, because if it's your immediate family or a a pod that you have created and you have trusted, then it it's easier to share food. But if you are trying to expand upon that and do a um, celebration with some more friends and trying to make it safe, it's it's kind of a, it's a an idea that has some merit trying to make these things individualized so that it's easier to share things without cross contamination or, or. Yeah. So for, for again, so for this year, it's a kind of a case by case basis. Who's mm -hmm. the group, even if you're an RV, you can still do a, a, a traditional bird. If you've got a, a smoker, you can still do smaller things in the oven. And I guess it all depends on what your group is. If you have a bunch of friends that you don't, you, you're trying to be very COVID safe, then maybe the, you do the smaller size of things. But if if not, go go closer towards the traditional side of things. Yeah, absolutely. Or the turkey pop turned out well. Each person gets their own uh, turkey leg. So can you buy just turkey legs? So you could just yes. do turkey pops. Yeah, you okay. can buy turkey legs, or you could buy thighs, or you know. Pretty much any part of the turkey is available in individual pieces. So, so this turkey right. pop has is a turkey leg wrapped in bacon. Is that what it is? Well, sorry, for vegans and vegetarians out there, but <laughs> you you strip the the bone, and then all is left is the meat. So you're not, you know, and most legs have all those nasty, you know, tendons and things. This is just it's like a meat pop, and you wrap it in bacon. It's sorry if you're vegan. I didn't mean to offend you. But. Uh, it's pretty well, I mean, anybody who's watching this, turkey talk on a Thanksgiving show. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so and this year you want to, this year you want to have vegan friendly and COVID friendly. <laughs> there's, a, there's a new category. Any other questions for Kirk regarding this the 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 mechanics of roasting smoking? Or anything like that. Exactly. He's like the pro. How he makes these turkey pots. Yeah. Like, how do you do that? Yeah. There's a picture of them here, but they're just in a pan. Did you do? Are you cooking them? Cooking them in the pan, or are you grilling those? What's happening? Uh, the here? pan was the pan was just for presentation. Okay. Um, the turkey pops. You you cut off the the top of the turkey leg, so it's you know it'll stand up on the grill. And then, uh, like I said, you, you strip it and all there is is just the ball of meat and you just cook it on the grill. And, uh, you know, it's just like cooking turkey any other time. Are you removing the skin too? No crispy skin. It's just the, uh, the meat. No, no, I'm not. I didn't remove the skin. It's just okay. all the tendons. You so know. In other words, what you're doing is you're doing like a, so you're doing like a French, a French cut like you would do with a with a with a, a lack of ram a rack of lamb. Yeah. You take off all the stuff off the bone, so you basically it's a uh, it's a clear bone with all the meat and stuff on the mm -hmm. top, like a lollipop. 
Yeah. And then you're saying you put bacon around the top. Right. All right. You wrap the whole thing in. So in other words, you're using the leg, which has got no other meat on it, as your holder. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. turkey pot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, our phone is. Uh, and then they just fine. fell over. <laughs> All right, and then grill it up and then put it in a pretty pan for a pretty presentation. <laughs> Absolutely. So and, you guys of course, have make sure it's done to the right temperature. Yes, yes. And what's the you, safe temperature for turkey? Thermometer. Dark meat. Uh, dark meat is at least 170 and breasts. 160. I like to pull them about 160, so they rise up to 165. Okay, so poultry is a little higher than other forms of meat because mm -hmm. of the salmonella issue. Well, it people used to cook it. That's why turkey was always dry because people cooked them too long. Over, they overcook it. Yeah, it doesn't no. need to be cooked to 180 degrees. That's way too too hot. Okay, so Kirk, what do you think about brining the turkey first before you cook it? Um, if you're going to smoke it, it's it's a must. You have to brine the turkey. And brining just adds a lot of flavor to the turkey. Um, basically, a gallon of water and equal parts uh, salt and sugar or whatever else you want to throw in there. There's no rules to a brine. But, uh, yeah, just put it in there for overnight, and you'll have some pretty juicy and delicious turkey, and the skin will crisp up too. Yeah, we can't underestimate the power of brining. So if you want a brining recipe, Kirk just told you, it's, it's salt and sugar, but uh, you or, have to let it, it's, it's all about letting it sit for 24 mm -hmm. hours. <clears throat> or like I do a lot of times because we boondock a lot, I, I dry brine it, which means I just salt it pretty heavily, leave it in the refrigerator, and then rinse it off before I cook it. Yeah, I've done that too, and it works just as well. <laughs> yeah, it works just as well. It, it pulls all mass. the moisture, and it holds the moisture inside anything that you're cooking so don't ever cook anything without brining <laughs> right, kids? now with the dry brine and that works well for boondocking because that yeah. I, that was going to be a question too and yeah. uh, you know you don't usually have a space to fill a vat with water and if you do are you putting like putting it outside with ice in it how you know keeping it cold or do you just usually do a dry brine <laughs> Yeah, I, I would recommend the dry binds, you know, well, you won't attract animals to your time. camp either. Yeah. yeah, so dry brine, so you're saying a dry brine works just as well as a wet brine? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I think we've decided between the two of us right now that a dry brining is the way to go, saves water, doesn't attract insects, and works just as well. A dry brine, so it's just salt over the beast, whatever you're using, and put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours, and you've got... An immensely more juicy product at the end of the day. You'll Amanda, enjoy a lot more. So, yeah, Amanda, did you say you had something with the brine? Um, yeah, I did a wet brine one year and didn't have any room in the fridge, so did it in a cooler and also, you know, had ice, so it stayed. And that was that was good for boondocking. And I mean, did have to have a little bit more water, but it worked. I do think I do agree, though. I've also done the dry brine, and I think it works just as well, and it's easier. So, yeah, that's good. Yeah, because I'm used to like the wet brine is what we did growing up yeah. or when I visit home. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, it was always it's traditional to use a lot of yeah to use a lot of water, but it sounds like the dry brine does the same job. Yeah. Or you can inject the brine, and it works. They do that a lot. Right in in frying turkeys. Right. Frying turkey seems like a bit. It, that would be a whole nother thing to carry in your RV. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're trying to reduce the amount of stuff that we actually have to purchase and carry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Amanda, do you have any other tips that you want to share about cooking in your RV or celebrating Thanksgiving? Um. Well, let's see. Any other tips? Um, like I said, I think doing things ahead of time. I'm always a fan of that. Um. Like we've been saying, try to keep it simple and maybe think a little bit untraditional, and that's okay. I'm really liking the idea of these individual dishes right now. Um, but I also think um, the other thing that I think that as our viewers we can take advantage of is maybe trying to use local ingredients or adding like a local flair 
um, we're in the Southwest this year and we're having Thanksgiving in the Southwest. And I'm thinking about doing maybe like a spicy jalapeno cornbread stuffing just to kind of go where we are. Yeah, where about in the Southwest are you? What's your, can you drop us a pin? Yeah, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to eat some. Sure. <laughs> far from each other. Yeah, we're, we're probably not that far. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's kind of fun. Um, we did Thanksgiving, when we did Thanksgiving in Florida on the Gulf Coast, um, one of the dishes we made had seafood in it. And like I grew up in New England, and you didn't have. I'm not, I'm not so sure for seafood for Thanksgiving. So, not at all. So that makes sense. That's interesting. Yeah, bring in the flavors that because because this is why we're traveling too, right? Yeah. No, it's yeah. no, so a good point. It. I mean, if you're if you're in uh, New Mexico, why don't you buy hatch chilies every yeah, minute? Right. And cook with I, have that's like all I three do. meals a day yeah. with hash chilies. Fill the fridge with yeah. hash chilies. <laughs> so I you still should, have hash chilies in my freezer. <laughs> they can use in everything. But yeah, absolutely. Can. They're more, they're, they're, they're a gift from the heavens. <laughs> yes. Although I I will say I have seen that I'm supposed to be a fan of Pueblo chilies, Pueblo, Colorado, especially oh. now being up there. So mm. I have to switch, but <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Is there a lot um, I don't know. I guess it's just a rival of rival oh, okay. of it. And, okay. and Pablo is saying they're better, but they're trying to say they're better. And Hatch is saying, no, we are the leader. You know, everybody knows about Hatch. So I haven't had a Pueblo chili, so I'm gonna have to check this out at some point. We'll try it. Before we get into any other tips that you guys have, I want to um, bring up Vicky had a question. She said, if a wet brine has salt and sugar, why is there no sugar in the dry brine? Because we keep talking about salt being on the outside. <clears throat> uh, that's a good be. question. Can you answer that, Amanda? I don't know. I, I think there can be. Um, I think it's kind of um, up to you about, you know, you, you yeah. don't have to use the sugar, but I definitely think you can. I don't see why not. I, 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 think, I, can't, yeah. see, I can't see scientifically why. I mean, the only thing I can think of it was the wet brine with the sugar. You're going to get the sugar going into the meat, and then um, that'll find produce a sweetness. If you do a dry brine with the sugar, it might cause too much caramelization on the outside yeah, of, the, of yeah. the of the. You get too much of the mylar reaction on the outside of the beast, and then it actually might burn. Might look like it burns yeah, if there's too much the sugar. Skin. Yes. Yeah. So I think that's why sugar is preferred in a wet brine and not in a dry brine. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. That does. I'll have to Google that. And um, Michelle also said oyster stuffing is her mom's specialty at Thanksgiving in a family oh, yeah. tradition. Um, we did have that. Oyster what? Lot, I think, stuffing. Yeah, that's oyster very stuffing. traditional. Yeah. We had, depending on which family side we were going to, is oyster dressing or oyster stuffing. Personally, I am not a fan of the smell of it. So it was like my, the one drawback for Thanksgiving to me, but that's just my personal thing because my dad absolutely adored it. And that was why, well, his one thing he wanted every year. <laughs> oyster stuffing. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah, I can smell it right now, and I'm not sure if I like it. But I, I'm sure your, if your dad grew up with it and it was special, is he from the Northeast? Midwest. Midwest, even? Yeah, Oysters you know, in we're Midwest. Getting Midwest. Midwest. <laughs> I don't know. I, tradition for us, but yeah, not because we have all the oysters. <laughs> We've got a little tip yeah. of Lake Michigan, um, but no. Does, does, oyster, does oyster take sage well? I don't know. <laughs> because the absolutely most important herb that you can buy for Thanksgiving is sage. Sage is the most beautiful, warming, pungent, gorgeous mm. aroma of a herb. And it's the, it's the if you don't buy any other herb at all, you have to get yourself some sage. So you need sage, cranberries, and uh, yeah. pie. Sounds <laughs> good. Okay. Mashed potatoes. Someone's calling yeah. out mashed potatoes yeah. are, are no, also are, without mashed potatoes. Yeah, I have onion said mashed potatoes. Yeah. 
Yes. I need some kind of potato. I, and it doesn't always have to be mashed for me, although I do love mashed potatoes, but roasted something, something, and some greens, you know, something like that. What, green? You only have green at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> The pilgrims never had green. They had <laughs> potatoes and turkeys. <laughs> Probably true. I don't think they did the uh, the, the dressing, the uh, green beans with the, the French the onions. On top. French onions? Probably not. Like, prob yeah, I don't think that was a, a uh, thing from back then. That first Thanksgiving, you don't think they had that? Mm. That's not a good no. one. No. I mean, they were, they were uh, pilgrims after all. Yeah. Another, I mean, another they they before we jump off the <laughs> about it for individualized things is uh, like little mini stuffed squash. So oh, like, oh, yeah. 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 That sounds Ooh. delicious. Yeah. yeah. So that's something I've done for Thanksgiving, especially if I'm not having a turkey. It's it's like a nice centerpiece, like to have kind of some stuffed squash, but you could get the little ones and do it. And there, we all have individual little stuffed squash. To work well too. Yeah. So, Stephen and Kirk, any other tips you want to share? Um, well, how about cleanup? Um, I personally, we boondock a lot. Like I said, uh, we use mostly disposable things on a on on Thanksgiving for a big meal. Um, you know, we do use like a platter, traditional platter and stuff, but most of our stuff is disposable. Because, uh, as everybody knows, garbage and cleanup is a huge thing in a in an RV, especially a small one. And when you don't have a uh, a ready-made trash can, a, a big, like a park trash can, if you are boondocking, where you can go dump everything, you don't want to carry that around forever either. Right, right. <laughs> you need somewhere to get that, get rid of all that trash. So yeah, the less cleanup you have to do, the better. That makes right. Sense. And or if you have a, a you know a big rig that has lots of water, or if you're in a park, by all means, you know, do dishes, whatever. <laughs> That's just what that will help you immensely with a cleanup in a boondocking situation. Yes. Yeah. That's great. So, do either of you have any big plans for Thanksgiving this year that you want to share, Amanda? Um, yeah, we are planning in the beginning stages of planning a small get together with some friends. It will be a boondocking thing. Um, so I'm, and I've been thinking some of the people are coming from different areas of the country and we haven't seen them in a while. So I have been thinking a lot about how we keep this safe. I mean, obviously we'd be outside, but I'm really liking these ideas about these individual serving things because I want everybody to feel comfortable. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, Thanksgiving in the desert, boondocking. That's my plan. That's right. With bringing in some of that Southwest flavor, maybe. Yes, That's definitely. Cornbread. And Stephen and Kirk, are you guys going to be together for Thanksgiving? Um, I don't think we're going to be able to talk after this show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just joking. I'm, I'm sure we will. Um, we'll see how it goes. I've got some good ideas to share with them. And, uh, um why not i mean i like this yeah. side this dry branding idea and these pops sound <laughs> these turkey pops oh, we I've have got to, to do turkey pops, i've got yeah. to i've got to try one for myself so i guess i'm going to have to ask kirk where he's going to be <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's kind of up in the air right now we we really don't know what we're going to do for thanksgiving so i'm sure it, it will be in the desert somewhere yeah it's a Probably weird, where we're weird at right year. now so yeah, it's, and, a, it's a weird year to try to make plans for anything. Right. Right. And again, just uh, just remember, keep some of the traditions, but break with some of the traditions this year and then we'll 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 get we'll uh, we'll do it properly next year. But I think at the end of the day if you if you've got edible stuff and you've got some friends or just you and someone else or just you, it will still if it will still work if you give thanks. Exactly. And start off, and start off the day with mimosas and Bloody Marys. Oh, yeah, you have to start the day off um, with mimosas and Bloody Marys or any, anything because how can you drink all day if you don't start in the morning? Exactly. 
<laughs> I think you can always jump on Zoom too, or FaceTime or however you do it and see some friends, see some family that maybe you won't get to visit this year, if that was your original plan. Yeah, we'll take so, a uh, one last question, since we did talk about boondocking, uh, Vicki wants to know what we do with scraps and fat that we don't want attracting critters. And uh, since you were cooking all that meat outside and smoking meat all the time, Kirk, uh, what do you do with it? I, I put it in a garbage bag or a Ziploc. Uh, usually like double or triple bag it and take it out with the trash like everything else. No, I think she was asking what you do while you're cooking. Is that the question? Well, cooking or afterwards before you can take it to yeah. a dump station or something, you know, what, what do you yeah. do? Okay. You it oh, in your RV or you don't want to leave it outside necessarily. No, um, no. I, I usually, I have a drip pan and I'll put the whole drip pan, you know, what I don't, sometimes I'll use the drippings for gravy. But uh, the fat and the grease, it all stays in the drip pan, and then it gets bagged and taken to the garbage. I wouldn't put it outside. One, one thing I've done, if I have, um, you know, not a large amount of fat or scrap, and I'm boondocking, I don't have a place to get rid of it right away, is I'll wrap it up really well, and I'll stick it in my freezer. So it kind of like freezes a little bit. And then the day that I'm going to go to the trash, I'll grab it and add it with the other trash. That's um, a good idea. I used to Thanks, recommend Brett. putting that kind of stuff. Um, we have a trailer, so we have a truck with a cap on it. And I used to put trash back there until this summer when a bear tried to break into the back of our truck. Oh. So I no longer recommend putting food scraps in the back of your truck. No, <laughs> we keep them in the shower. <laughs> shower, that's a good place. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's interesting. Um, and yeah, good to know. <laughs> I'm sure I know where that went too. So great, guys. Well, that that sounds perfect. And Michelle does mention she freezes hers if she's not able to leave it in the park trash. She does have a residential refrigerator freezer, so it makes it a little bit easier. <laughs> oh, yeah, def absolutely. If you can put bones or whatever in the, in the freezer, that will protect them from getting styles and attracting insects etc yeah yeah or you can okay. make stock with the scrap oh yeah i was about to say stop yes. don't throw away the bones use every <laughs> part of my even the peels of your carrots and all of that stuff for your stuffing you can use that to make a good broth with too and don't forget the sage <laughs> and don't forget the sage so thank you guys so much for joining us we hope you have a wonderful thanksgiving amanda and stephen and kirk and anya who's hiding back there um i know scott's <laughs> looking for you so <laughs> i can hear An that anya's here. holding the flashlight yeah, so she's anya's yeah, light. She, she is providing a purpose here <laughs> she's not hiding she's just keeping us keeping us looking right um tv worthy <laughs> And the, for everybody who joined us, thank you. And we hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving this year, too. And let us know in the comments what you're doing this year. And we hope that we helped uh, dispel uh, some of the fears that you might have about trying to make a meal or celebrate Thanksgiving on your own or in your RV with smaller kitchens and not family. And we've all done it and we've all survived and we kind of love it. So uh, we hope that you do too. Uh, next week, just so you know, we are having a webinar on renovating your RV. And since we are, we mentioned air fryers, uh, one of the guests, we're gonna have a panel of people again who have renovated different parts of their RV and different, different things, different styles. So you can kind of get a taste of different ways to do things. Um, but a little sneak peek here is someone has renovated their kitchen and they did put one of those air fryers with like oven in it and they've been making many things in it. So loving it because I've been that'd asking. Be, that'd be very that. interesting to see that. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So join us next Wednesday at the same time, same channel. And we'll see you there. Thank you all for joining us. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Goodbye. Thanksgiving. Bye.